Welcome once again to The Breakfast. We are going straight into the newspapers this morning and seeing what major stories have made the headlines for you. We, of course, will be joined by Mr. Ezekiel Nyaitok. And, of course, he will be giving his quick analysis on some of these big stories. Good morning to you, sir. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be on Plus TV Africa. Great to have you here. Let's start with the stories on the punch this morning. The big one there says ACF Fenifera disagree as Senate knocks governors negotiating with bandits. Also this morning, federal government approves Bankers Committee takeover of National Theater and 21.83 billion naira renovation. Also, uh, fuel scarcity looms as marketers disrupt for loading. Federal government adamant as caught on freezes and SARS campaigners' bank accounts. Uh, we also have uh, SMBF and others condemn rumored headsmen's invasion of Wale Shoinka's residence. A few others on the punch this morning. 400 Lekki Tollgate neighbors displaced as Lagos uh, demolishes houses. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, 41 suspected internet fraudsters arrested in Oshun, Ogu, and Plateau states. Four or your local government uh, boss abductors kidnapped. Um, and um, I'm not sure what the story says, to be honest. Four or your local government boss abductors and kidnapped farmers uh, uh, killers arrested. Okay. Fanny Coyote approached me on a planned defection to the APC, says uh, Yahya Bellu. And also this morning uh, on the Punch newspapers, Oyunlala, the recent defector to PDP, can't broker peace. Fire says faction is saying this morning. All right, um, Mr. Yatok, I think it's over to you now. Let's see what two major stories you can quickly speak on. Okay, um, if we look at the uh, major headline, which is um, the Senate disagreeing with um, um, the governors for um, wanting to negotiate with bandits, it really, really bothers me. I keep saying this, I could never say it enough, if we understand what governance is all about. Common sense tells you that if you want to address an issue, you do that from first principles. Number one, have we interrogated what all this banditry and um, kidnapping is all about? Boko Haram, have we looked at the genesis, the evolutions, the trends, the traditions, the conventions? And have we not come to establish that this is not about being ideological, but about being transactional? And if it is transactional, the question is, how do you um, stop something that is becoming lucrative? Unless something is lucrative, it cannot be transactional unless it is ideological. Because the issues of faith, you don't reason it, you don't try to interrogate it, you take it. But outside of ideology, which it isn't right now, in transaction, it's about how profitable it is. And what do you do? It's just, again, commonsensical that you take the wind of the sale of that transaction and you will kill it. For instance, two things come up very easily without my being a security expert. Number one is that how do they get the recruit and how do they get the funding? Why do the recruits come? Because they believe in them or because they are being paid? If they are being paid, it means that the recruits are attracted by the funding. And if that be the case, number one, how do you kind of take the wind, again, I say, of the sale of the recruits? Why do the young people go to them? It's not because they believe in them, but because it will pay them. So what do you do? You find a way of engaging your young people meaningfully. And not to think that they don't think. They think they want to leave. They like to think the good things of life that they see the politicians display. If they cannot get it formally, they will get it informally. If they can't get it officially, they will get it unofficially. Just sim as simple as that. That's number one. Number two, their funding. How do they get their funding? All right, but, but they, these are... Sense. No, no, let me drop this. Let me drop this. It's very important. It's just simple common sense that the ransoms they pay has become so lucrative, so attractive. So we may need to take some hard decisions as a government and have a governance policy. Right now, we don't have policies. Parties don't have ideologies. Governments don't have directions and policies. So anybody comes in, does what they want. There should be a national policy that every governor knows it is not subject to their interpretation or their whims and caprices. 
This is a national policy. We don't pay ransom. We are going to have to, I mean, take some hard decisions. They feel some pains. It's like labor. We've got to go through that labor to have that child a system that is safe. This ransom pain, we must interrogate it. It is a short, it's like, it's like stripping your future to enhance your present. Qu quickly, no, quickly, and this is what I want you to address so we can move to another uh, story. Uh, the idea generally of negotiating with these um, criminal elements, um, do you think that maybe you know, we should be talking about it at all? You know, should we be looking at the carrot and stick approach? Since we obviously have not been able to be, uh, have not been successful with uh, the military approach. What is the carrot? Take the wind off their sail. Give the young people a hope and a future. Make them your central policy. Look at our budget. What is there for our young people? We're not thinking, we're just too transactional. Money, money, money. Budget, budget, budget. Defense, defense. Buy this, buy that. And it's not working. So why don't we turn back and look at education and look at employment. Look at, you know, I said the other day, I was talking with the Vice Chancellor of Akwa Ibon State University, and he said that he has to completely change the educational curriculum because when you tell a child, these are the names of flowers, it doesn't a attract right. him. But when you tell him that these are the scents that you can extract from flowers and make money from such scents through perfumes, he's like, yeah, 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 he's gonna learn them. So All let's right. change the educational system. All right. Quickly also speak on the um, court order to unfreeze the bank accounts of NSAR's um, protesters uh, so we can move on. It is, it is the same, same, same people who do not understand that governance is about being, being, being cerebral. Governance is about, you know, being, 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 being not just clever, but clairvoyant. You need to understand this. When you understand all those things, you know that if these people are protesting, you must interrogate why they are protesting and know that a country of laws, there are rights and obligations which you must stick by. Why do you freeze these people's accounts? It's just all this knee-jerk approach to everything. Now the court says, release the account because they have no basis to do that. And now they are starting to think, the next thing is to make the people feel that you cannot obey. They should just obey the court order, unfreeze these people's account and think better. I wish there was more time. I would have looked at some other dimensions, but oh, hopefully, really don't hopefully have they time. hopefully they come up again in other papers. We'll, we'll, we'll All go. right, moving on to the Nation newspaper now. Uh, this one it says insecurity who failed in our obligation says speaker. Ninety-three year old Clack, my battle with COVID nineteen, ex minister lashes Kogi governor, and SARS protest promoters repossess bank accounts. Manufacturers, industrialists call for forex policy review. Government caps public debt at 40% of GDP. And uh, we also see this one saying, gunmen Q3 in Anambra, seven worry-bound travelers abducted. Pirates kidnap six in speedboat attack. Boko Haram captures three customs officers. 11 kidnapped suspects held in Ibarakba. And this story here, my dad's house not attacked by herders, says Shoinka's son. Uh, Ms. Angietok, when I saw this video yesterday of a man on a bike saying that uh, Wale Shoinka's house had been attacked by herdsmen and he was going to, you know, look, take a look at the situation, I said to myself and to one of my colleagues that this is just a man on a bike saying things to the camera. If I don't see with my eyes, I wouldn't believe it. And here we see his son coming out to say his father's house was not attacked. What are your thoughts on this issue, especially on how misinformation is now playing a big role in seeming to, you know, basically intensify the heat in the policy right now? Yeah, I, I, I run one of the probably most influential um, networks on, um, on the WhatsApp um, environment. And we had to put in very hard policies, you know, and we've had to remove a governor from that group. I mean, is that serious? You don't just carry something and dump. You don't do that. You must take personal responsibility for everything you post in that group. We've removed senator, we've removed governor. You don't just dump things, you know, for, we have very hard policies. 
I want to appeal to administrators or admins of um, social media groups to just make their people to, to take responsibility. There's so much misinformation that is going on, and a lot of it is very strategic. For instance, we know that Wale Shoinka, the revered um, Nobel laureate, is somebody who's come up hard on these issues and taking a very definitive stance. So, and Nigerians have come to love him. So if you can say, hey, Wale Shoinka is being attacked, he's going to instantly raise emotions and sentiments. Now, that bike man might have been misinformed, but the man who did the video should have, you know, been a little more circumspect. It's just like saying, ah, they've started killing people in the Southeast, East, or they started killing Fulanese, and they bring out a video of something that happened in Sudan or something. And, you know, I want to appeal to Nigerians, please don't let your sentiments and emotions run wild on social media. The next thing you should do is go to one of the mainstream media, go to Plus TV Africa, go through their website, and they are carrying the story, go to one or two others. If they are not carrying the story, just leave it for now, okay? So that's what I will tell Nigerians, so that you don't inadvertently fall into the traps of people who want to cause chaos between us so they can profit therefrom. Hmm. How about this big one here? Um, this is Bajabi Amila saying, quote, Every time a citizen goes about going about their business is killed or kidnapped, loses their property or livelihood, we have failed in our obligation. Do you agree? Um, you see, rhetorics is good. But when the federal, when the man to protect me comes to warn me, what is he saying I should do? The man that comes to protect, is supposed to protect me, is coming to warn me. He's just simply saying, bros, be like, I know if you do this here again, or make it just take care of yourself. That's what it means. I, I appreciate the statement, but that statement should not come from the Speaker of the, of, the, of, 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 of the House of Representatives of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. What should come from him should be a policy document, a bill that he presents in the House to address the problem. It is through the bill he speaks to us and says, gentlemen, we are not comfortable with what we have achieved so far. We are not okay with what is happening. That's why I'm bringing this bill to be able to address the situation. And we are going to expedite action because it's an emergency. And I, as a speaker of this house, I'm going to leave no turn unturned because I want to make sure that in my time, there is security. Don't tell me you have failed. If you have failed, what do you want me to do with it? You're just telling me you're creating panic in me. You're creating panic and you're asking me, bros, take care of yourself, bro, because this is not pass us. I, don't, I think that our leaders should be more strategic in communication. We want to see the bill. We want to see the House address fundamental national issues. Take them up and give us confidence. Now, hope is the anchor that stabilizes the soul. The same way, by the time people know that something is coming, they'll say, oh boy, we need to change our trade because it'd be like, say, this government, they don't they come strong, go. Let's start mm -hmm. thinking. But when the speaker says, we have failed, we have failed, the criminals go back and laugh and say, did you hear that? Man? He said they have failed. Bros, it means we are winning. All right. Wow. I'm not okay. <laughs> okay, let's quickly go to the Daily Independent. Uh, there's a few uh, stories that we could also pick up from there. Um, it says, anger and despair sentiments as Senate tackles insecurity. Urges governors to execute national livestock transformation plan. Wants operatives to deploy drones and helicopters to monitor forests. Uh, we also court orders uh, CBN to unfreeze NSAR's promoters' accounts. 2023 presidency. APC will decide on zoning, says uh, Governor Dave Omahi. And also experts uh, say Nigeria can't curtail new variant of COVID-19. Um, federal government okays 26.7 billion naira for communication and water information contracts. And also MAN and LCCI seek policies uh, review and rates unification. Um, all right, I think we can uh, quickly speak on the scare once again with the COVID-19 and our ability to handle these 
uh, different variants of uh, the virus. Um, Ms. Yanitok, um, do you think yeah. that you've seen uh, the right steps or the right policies in place that should assure Nigerians that the government knows what it's doing and is you know, capable of handling these different variants? Let me tell you, yesterday I left to your, I'm actually in Abuja, I left to your for Abuja. I didn't tell anybody what was coming. So as I got to the airport, I needed to find my way to the house and I picked the cab. As I entered the airport taxi and he was going, I said, please put on your mask. And I realized that he was using it as a chin. I said, put it properly because you protect yourself, you protect me. And besides, wind down because that your AC is blowing your breath and everything on my side and I need to protect myself. I just made a big deal out of it. When he was dropping me, you know what he said? He said, oh, God, leave that thing. This COVID is a lie. These people know what they do. They won't carry and chop money. I said, it's not a lie. I've lost somebody. He said, oh, God, people, they die every day. Every day, people, they die. You know, it took me five minutes of trying to convince one driver in the airport, which means he's relatively enlightened. And he was speaking good English. I was getting exasperated. And I asked myself a simple question. To what extent does the federal government believe in the communication? Is it all about, oh, COVID, COVID, we need 20 billion. No, we need 50 billion to buy vaccines, to buy between vaccines and enlightenment. Where should we put more money into? You are bringing a hundred million, a thousand doses or one million or 10 million or 20 million or 50 million to 200 million people. Whereas information, information can go a longer way. National Orientation Agency, I don't know where they are. The COVID, everything is about transaction in Nigeria. There's, governance has completely broken down. Unless something is bringing money. They don't, because when you go to enlighten people, how does that bring money? Unless they're like, okay, no, 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 no. NOA is not, now going to have a budget. There will be the people controlling the money. No, 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 no. Instead, let's go for procurement. These are the things that Nigerians need to say enough is enough. And they have to wake up. That's why I like what Madam Obi Ezekwesili is doing with the, you know, the School of um, Governance, uh, Politics, and, um, you know, um, and um, something else. And what the uh, National Consultative Front is doing. The time has come for us to block party lines forget and think of the Nigeria project. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ia Etok, for your uh, thoughts so far. Let's just quickly look at uh, a few stories on the Nigerian Tribune uh, on this segment here. It says, issue executive order to flush out criminals and ban open grazing. Still about this open grazing issue, Fanny Kaede, now in APC, Kogi governor, and uh, independent petroleum marketers, tanker drivers, threatened to stop loading fuel today. Let's uh, quickly talk about this, uh, uh, the one about the independent uh, petroleum marketers and tanker drivers threatening to stop loading fuel today in just about uh, 30 seconds, please. Thanks for making me a doctor. I thought only my wife was a doctor. Now I'll tell my wife that both <laughs> we are now both doctors. <laughs> But on the independent marketers, I, I believe that we should be able to see things coming. They need to make their profit, but their profits need to be reasonable within a time like this. But there's too much opacity in all that is going on. That's why I find it a lot of times difficult to comment on what is going on within the petroleum subsector. We really don't know the important thing, uh, the cost of coming in. We don't know the charges that are coming in. We don't know the profits and the margins of it. We just don't know. We just see, how do I talk about something I don't know the details of? I can't speculate. I need to say something, say decisively, definitively, and then people can quote me. So I really can't say much about it because I don't know any of the cost variables involved and if they are actually being, um, maybe they are taking advantage of us or they are being just very, very um, the business like doing marginal profit. I really don't know. So right. I can't talk much about what I don't know the details of. Okay. All right. All right. I think that's what we're going to be uh, wrapping yes, up uh, exactly. for today. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Yatok. Always uh, interesting speaking my with pleasure. you. Thanks for your time. Thanks for making me a doctor. Thank you. I'll tell my <laughs> way. <laughs> All right. Stay with us here. We're moving next into talking about things that happened today in history. I'm going to be taking a story from the year 2012, and uh, it's the death of one of the most powerful black voices, m most powerful voices, really, in the world.
Stay with us.